Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, July 21st, I think. Yes, it is. It is a beautiful sunny morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania, although we do have thunderstorms planned for the day, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, and I'm a little bit laughing here because I just recorded this whole video. It was a long one, and I forgot to start the recording, so I got nothing. So I got to redo it, and uh, unfortunately, it was an impressions of the Tobacco of the Month chosen by you, the Friday Night Live Stream viewer, Cornell and Deal Burley Flake Number One from 2017. I've already smoked most of that. I've got a little bit left here. I will reload. I just didn't want to dump this out because it's good stuff. I will reload as we talk, and uh, I'll tell you about Burley Flake number one, and then I got a little bit I want to talk about in terms of uh, small web stuff, and stick around, I think you'll, you'll find that interesting. So, what can I say about Burley Flake number one? I've had this before, I've never had it with, what is it, seven, seven, eight years of age? Seven, seven. Um, Sorry, I've been watching uh, Ultra 7, which is an Ultraman series, and now I've got the seven song stuck in my head. Nobody will get that. So, Burley Flake number one is a mixture of uh, Burley, Red Virginia, and what they call a splash of Perique. Splash. From what I can recall, and it's been a couple years since I've had a fresh tin of this, so from what I can recall, this is obviously very similar because it's the same tobacco, but it has mellowed and sort of smoothed out, and some of the flavor profiles changed a bit. So the burley, you start off with the burley, it's, it's wonderful. If you like burley, the initial light of this is, is going to make you a very happy person. It is um, woody and cocoa notes that dark chocolate kind of cocoa bitterness not a lot of nuttiness the Virginia comes in really quickly and it's very dark sweet caramel but but just enough to be noticeable it doesn't it at all dominate that burly but it's there and it's just a delicious combination and then the Perique is not spicy it's not peppery the retrohale is pretty well behaved um, pretty smooth, I should say, but it's got that plummy figginess that mixes really well with the, the 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 sweetness of the Virginia, and man, that comes together in a wonderful way. Now, from what I can remember about this fresh, everything I just said is true, except you get some spiciness off the Perique, and it was a little rough around the edges as many Cornell and Deal blends can be. Although this one is, it's pressed, so I would have expected it to be a little bit smoother. You get these typical Cornell and Deal flakes, They're, they break apart very easily. And something I want to show you that I hope will come up on the camera. Yeah, there you go. It's got mold on it. Now, people will tell you it's sugar or it's bloom. You see white stuff on your tobacco, your aged pipe tobacco. Aged pipe tobacco, that's important. It is either mold or bacteria. And as far as I can tell, and don't take my word for it, but as far as I can tell, it's perfectly safe to smoke that. Uh, keep in mind you're burning it, so it's probably not gonna probably not gonna survive. But um, you know, people have been smoking this forever, and it, I haven't heard of anybody getting any sort of infection or dying from moldy tobacco or bacteria. Bacteria leak, bacteria, bacteria infected. I guess is the right word. Tobacco. Not really infected, it was just growing on the surface. Anyway, uh, 
if it's not white, that's when I get worried. If it's green, if it's blue, anything like that, I throw it away. But white is, has never been a problem for me and for many other people. But you do you. You, you do what you're, you feel safe doing. Don't take my word for that. Now people will say, oh, it's sugar. It, it can't be sugar. Fermentation consumes sugar. It doesn't generate sugar. And the kind of fermentation that goes on in tobacco actually produces uh, one of the one of the byproducts is acetic acid, and that's why a lot of aged tobaccos have that sort of vinegary smell. Uh, It's an interesting process. And, and, you know, the fact is not a lot is known about tobacco aging. But in my experience, it, it tends to do really two things. It, it takes the rough edges off and it melds the flavors. Um, and that definitely has happened here. If I was a younger man, I would probably buy myself... You know, 10 tins of this, put them in the cellar and plan 10 years from now, I'm going to open a tin every year on my birthday or something like that, because it's that good. Not being a younger man, I probably won't do that. Plus, my wife will kill me because I have enough tobacco to easily last me the rest of my life, especially since I'm, I'm down to like two to three bowls a day now. Uh, I do not have to ever buy tobacco again. <laughs> So, there you have it. I can't recommend that you go out and buy this if you're not going to age it simply because I don't remember it well enough. But I can tell you this is a really, if you're a burly guy, this is a blend you've got to try. Good stuff. Uh, so the other thing I wanted to talk about today, and actually I'm kind of glad that I didn't record the first run because it gave me some time to process this a little bit more and I kind of went out of the order that I should have gone in. So you're getting a better video the second time around. Thank God, I hope I'm recording this one. My monitor is over there. That's why I keep looking in that direction. Uh, so, I got an email the other day from a gentleman that does search engine optimization. And he said, hey, I love your YouTube channel. And he included screenshots of many of my videos, multiple videos. He clearly has watched some of them based on like the position in the video and stuff. Maybe they've got a bot that does this. I don't know. But it looked like a... It looked like an actual guy that watched my videos and thought he could make a difference uh, and make money off of me in the process. And he said, these are the things I can do for you. I'm not going to remember them all, but the first one was um, thumbnail, you know, title card. Uh, help me make better, more effective title cards. And I, that one kind of raised my hackles right away because I enjoy making my title cards. You know, the thumbnail, the thing that you see at the beginning of my video and at the end. I've developed over the years a style that I use and, and I like it. And nobody notices these things, but like I, I have two color blocks behind the text where I have the title of the video. And those colors are actually chosen from the rest of the image. And they're chosen to provide contrast and, and make that title kind of pop out of the background. I do that intentionally. I enjoy doing it. Uh, I don't know if it's effective, but I hope that when people see one of my thumbnails, they recognize it as one of my videos. Uh, I don't know if they're distinctive enough for that. You, let me know. Uh, but I don't care, honestly, <laughs> because I enjoy making them and I'm not going to change it because I don't want to change that style. 
you know, that's, that's sort of my, a signature of mine. Uh, he then went on to say, you know, uh, video scripting, something like that. It wasn't scripting, but, you know, basically helping me make more effective videos, you know, making sure I say this thing up front and making sure I, you know, do why would I want to do that? You know, I, I make these because I enjoy making them, and some of you enjoy watching them. And there was a couple other things that, you know, it's like about keywords and, and whatnot. I think I might be getting to the bottom of the bowl here. And, yeah, I mean, I get it. So, on a good day, a really good day, maybe 400 people will watch this video. Not one day, but over the course of the next week. I am amazed by that, and I'm so thankful that you guys watch it. You know, I really am. So maybe I could work with this guy and get 4,000 people to watch it. Wow. That'd be cool. I'd like to be talking to 4,000 people. I would never be able to keep up with the comments. I can't keep up with the comments now. But that would be really neat that, you know, I'd have that many friends that I could talk to. And, you know, maybe that many people that could then be inspired to make their own videos to talk back to. That'd be wonderful. We grow the community, right? Now, I don't honestly think there's 4,000 people out there. I really don't. I don't think there's 4,000 people in the YouTube pipe community. Uh, but if you look at my subscription numbers, they're, they're, they're stupid. I don't even pay attention to them anymore because there's, you know, one-tenth of the people subscribed to me watch my videos. Actually, it's even less than that. I'm getting close to 6,000 now, I think. There's not 6,000 people out there that are still actively watching my videos. There's 6,000 people that at some point thought, oh, I'll click that subscribe button. And they may not even watch YouTube anymore. <laughs> um, so I think the subscription numbers mean nothing. But getting 4,000 people, it would, it, would, it would grow the community, it would drive the algorithm, it would get me out to more people. But to do that, I'd have to change. And to make that change, I would wind up alienating the 400 people that watch me right now. And why would I do that? You know, if I've got three good friends and I want to add one, I won't suddenly start, you know, acting like a jerk <laughs> to attract that one person and in the process drive away the three that I already have. Why would I do that? And then it occurred to me, there's a reason, and I am going to reload this, but I'm going to reload with Haunted Bookshop because I, basically I don't want to waste another bowl of this. Hope you don't mind that. Um, the reason occurred to me, and, and I realized that, and this, this makes perfect sense, and I think many of you will recognize what I'm about to say. If all I'm interested in is the numbers and getting the views that will make me money. You know, if I'm interested in monetization and selling merchandise and all that kind of stuff, if I'm interested in building a YouTube empire, then I don't care about the 400. I don't care. I just want numbers. I'm putting on a show. It's like I'm, 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 a, I'm a TV show and I'm just trying to gather in advertising dollars. That's not what I want to do. That's not what I think most of you want to do. I think most of you just want a way to have friends and share and have somebody to smoke a pipe with and talk about pipes and tobacco and whatever else is going on in your life. Got the haunted bookshop here. And as I thought about that, I could get into, you know, there's basically two camps and, and there are the guys that are in that search engine optimization camp and 
God bless them. They're building their empires. I don't think they're doing anything to serve the community, but that's another story. And then there are guys that are just in it for the love of the community. And I was thinking about the early internet. The, the, and, and now I'm going to go into old codger mode. So bear with me, guys. This is going to be a walk up the walk to school uphill both ways kind of thing. But it was fun. Okay, it wasn't a chore. It wasn't. It wasn't. A, it wasn't an ordeal. Back when when the internet first started to become a thing on people's radar, you know, computers were inexpensive enough that people started having them in the home. I had my first. Uh, reasonable internet connected uh, computer at home had dial up access because uh, that's all there was computers at work because I was a scientist in, in, in graduate school at the time so there were computers in the lab uh, we didn't have computers in our offices we, that, that was still pretty rare that you'd have a computer in your office if you were faculty you would but if you're a grad student you didn't uh, And there was this internet thing, and there wasn't really much to do on it. You know, we just, there'd be blogs and things like that, but nobody really used it uh, for work. And I was at Pitt, University of Pittsburgh, and somebody at Carnegie Mellon set up a, a webcam. I don't even know if it was a webcam at the time. A camera that was focused on the coffee pot in, I believe it was the computer science department. And they did this for practical reasons. If, if you were working at your desk uh, and you wanted coffee, you could go to this website and see the coffee pot and see whether or not there was coffee. Well, this started to circulate just through the rumor mill. Uh, the, you know, Carnegie Mellon was right across the street. And we started to hear about this thing. And everybody would hear about it. And they'd run back to their, their, their computer and, and look at it. You know, like, wow, <laughs> I could see it. A live image of the, the coffee pot and it wasn't streaming it was actually like sending a, a picture every so often it would update but it was cool it was it was unusual it was it was it was amazing so that's what it was like and then it just started to grow and and there were these web pages that were really simple, you know, which is like a list of, of text links. And you, 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 you know, like if I set up a web page and I didn't, but if I did at the time, I might have, you know, Mike's pipe smoking web page. And the first link might be my first pipe and you'd click on it and there'd be a story about my first pipe. There were no embedded images. Maybe on that page, there'd be an embedded image of the pipe or something. But for the most part, it was text. And You'd read that and then you'd go back and there'd be a back link and and the next thing might be uh, you know my favorite tobacco and you click on that and you could read about my favorite tobacco and what was really neat about this was at the bottom of the web page there were often these things called web rings or web hubs and the idea there was let's say I've got a, a web page that's about uh, pipe restoration and you've got one about tobacco impressions. And Fred over there has one about uh, Peterson pipes, uh, whatever. Well, the web ring is I link to you and you link to Fred and Fred links to me. So if somebody reads my page and they say, oh, what else can I find out about pipes? Well, there's a link and you click on it and it goes to your page and they read your page and they well, oh, what else? Oh, there's a link and it goes to Fred's page. And it wasn't that simple because I think there was, everybody was connected to everybody and there was some randomization in that link, but you get the idea. It was a community. And we'd get to know one another. And there would be, uh, uh, what were they called? Usenet mailing lists uh, where you could communicate with one another. Not like the forms today. There were forms. They, they, they were very primitive. Uh, but they all were, they were not real time. So I'd type something up either on the mailing list or on a form. And it would 
get uploaded, and then the next day it would refresh, and you would see it, and you would respond to it, and the next day it would refresh, and I would see the response. So it was it was slow. It was it was slow, but it gave you time to think. It was it was a more gentle, comfortable experience. And what was great about it that I hadn't thought about until I got this email was there was no advertising. There was no drive to grow. There was no numbers. There, there, none of that existed. No metrics. It was just about the community. It was just about meeting people, sharing information, making friends, learning things, uh, collaborating. It was a wonderful, wonderful thing. And that's all gone now. We try to recapture some of that here. We may not be doing it intentionally, but that's what we've built in the YouTube pipe community. With the exception of the folks that are building empires, but leave them aside. But it's hard here because we got all the pressures of censorship and, and you know, the, the, the algorithm. And, you know, how do people find your video? If you've got under 100 subs right now, it's very hard for me to know who you are, to see you. I don't see those web pages. I have to look for them, the web pages, YouTube channels. I have to look for them. Or somebody has to tell me about them. And unfortunately, I just don't have the time to, to watch a lot of videos. So that's the other thing. These tend to take more time. And I'm not by any means saying that we should abandon YouTube. That, that's not my point here. But there's something, there's a movement right now called the small web. I think it's called the small web. Where people are setting up these old style HTML based websites and using web rings to connect. And it's amazing that this, this is happening because it really is a reaction to the nonsense of social media, the way that social media is shaping us into these silos and and only telling you about the people that the algorithm thinks you want to know about. Well, it's not because the algorithm has your best interest at heart. It's because the algorithm wants to drive advertising. And it creates these artificial silos where I may never see you because you are off in a different bubble. And maybe that bubble is formed out of politics, or maybe it's formed out of religion, or maybe it's formed out of um, the type of tobacco you're interested in, or whatever. But, but you're, you're separated from me. Well, that doesn't happen in, in the small web. Uh, and I really think I'm going to give this a try. I don't know if I'm going to have the time, but... I'm going to try. I, I used to be able to do HTML coding, so I can probably pick it up pretty quickly. There are services that you can use that you know will generate the web page for you. Yes, you're going to have to type. Yes, it's going to be text-based. There can be pictures. There can be, I think there can be videos, but it's, it's a different thing. But wouldn't it be cool to have a small web pipe smokers web ring uh, where people that were interested in doing this, I'm not saying everybody needs to do it, but if you're interested in doing it, we could create this, this community. And then other people that don't want to have the web page could still look at it and could still go from page to page and read them and see what's going on. And you can bookmark them. You don't have to go through the web ring. You know, you can pick your favorites out and everything. I think this would be really nice. I think it would be a, a nice, uh, comfortable alternative to the social media nonsense that we're dealing with. So I'm going to do it. And if anybody else is out interested, or if anybody has more experience with uh, setting up websites, simple HTML code kind of things, uh, knows more about that, you want to jump in and do it yourself, fine. Uh, I don't want to necessarily pioneer this, but I want to be a part of it if it happens. And if I have to pioneer it to make it happen, I'll do that. Uh, if you're interested, let me know. Get in touch. Uh, my, my email address is my YouTube channel name uh, at gmail.com.
Now it's not going to be free. That's one of the problems. Uh, you're going to have to buy a domain name, which is like five bucks a year, six bucks a year, something like that. Uh, and I haven't figured out the hosting side of it yet. I think there's ways to do that either free or or, or uh, relatively inexpensively because we're not expecting to have a huge amount of traffic. It's not like we're going to have videos and uh, you know long videos and stuff like that. We're only basically going to be sharing text. Let me know if you're interested. Let me know in the comments. Send me an email. Uh, maybe this is a stupid idea, but I'm going to do it. I don't. I don't care if, if everybody says that's a stupid idea. I'm still going to do it because I think it would be fun. Yeah, let's 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 bring back the internet of the '90s, <laughs> and let's uh, let's create a community that's part of this community. Not, not, I'm not trying to split off or anything like that. But let's have a, a space where we don't have to worry about censorship, where we don't have to worry about advertising, where we don't have to worry about um, driving algorithms and all that, just to connect and just just to be just to be friends. You know, there were no search engines. Search engines didn't come along until, uh, I don't know, how, how old is Google? It was, it was the late 90s, I believe. So yeah, the, the only, you only found things either through these kind of web rings, somebody would tell you about it, you know, word of mouth kind of stuff. Um, the the dial-up things like you you would dial up and go on America Online that would have categories that you could click like uh, there'd be like sports and it would give you a list of web pages. Uh, I'm rambling. It was a different world, but it was fun, and uh, I'm I'm bringing it back. Uh, anyway, uh, what's up for today? Well, I've already done the gardening, brought in some arugula. Peppers are doing fantastic. Cucumbers are doing okay, but everything else is just looking really sad. The rabbits have... My wife tried to grow beans. I feel so bad for her. The rabbits are farming her beans. I've never seen anything like this. The, the plants have been stripped of their leaves, but they leave just enough so that it grows back. And these poor bean plants have been growing and the rabbits will come and eat just enough of them so that they stay, they survive, and then they'll grow more leaves. And I'll look at it, I'll say, oh, look at that little thing. It's going, it's going to come back. And then the next day it'll be down to one leaf again. It's amazing that they're, they're actually little farmers, these, these sons of a guns. But live and learn might set up some more effective uh, fencing next year. Try to keep them buggers out. Beyond that, um, I got some household chores I got to do because my wife's in Pittsburgh, so I'm picking up the slack for her. Uh, it's going to be an early night for me because I got to get up very early tomorrow. So, we will see. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments or by email if you're interested in a small web for pipe smokers. And with that, I will say goodbye. So, until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.